by your command. You are listening to The Movie Guys Showcast. Attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about this week's new releases? Movie guys, it's me, God, and I'm here to answer your prayers. You're bringing Harold Ramis back to life? No, I am pushing the release of A Haunted House 2 until mid-April. You're welcome, humanity. Can't you just make it so that A Haunted House 2 was never made? Hey, I'm God, not Harvey Weinstein. That's how God leaves. Wait. I'm out of, <laughs> out of here. Never talked to God. Never prayed to God. Isn't God everywhere? How could he be out of he somewhere? Had, well, he's, he's got other places to be. Well, by virtue by, of being everywhere, he can be nowhere at the same time, and he's late go. for that. Goodness. We're already starting with the Bible learnings today. Yeah, well, big movie. Big Noah movie, this Noah. week. That's right. When did we start with the speak and spell intro? That was a Cylon. Speak and spell? <laughs> was, didn't it sound like It's a, a Cylon. Cylon. That I was should, a Cylon from I Battlestar Galactica. Uh, have you watched Battlestar Galactica? It's okay no, if you haven't. They're no, big no. television show. You're a movie, movie guy. Guys. I, I had a, a model of Battlestar Galactica ships. And I remember blowing them up with firecrackers. Does that count? And that reminded you of Speak and Spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could do yeah. that with Battlestar Galactica because Star Wars ones, they're going to be worth some. Battlestar, yeah. yeah, blow up Hatch and whatever, Richard Hatch. Or well, whatever this was back when you would make your models with a lot of glue so they would catch on fire when you blew them up. Did you do that? Uh, no. Oh, well, yeah, you would, make your, you would make your models with extra glue. I like um, that very much. Yeah, because then they would burst into flames. Did you the also fire. torture the neighbor's cats? No. No. Uh, I drew a line, Karen. All right. Hey, welcome to the Movie Showcast, everybody. Part of the vast and sprawling Movie Guys empire. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? <laughs> You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with jokes, rants, sketches, characters, bits, special guests, and more as we broadcast from the Admirals Club, an oasis for first-class travelers. They don't stop making movies, so we don't stop making comedy shows about movies, which means you can get a new show every week on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and, of course, the movieguys.net. Absolutely free. And we encourage you to subscribe. And if you do, still no charge. Yeah. We're also on one of the fastest-growing internet radio stations out there, WBAD.net, where you can hear our show Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and catch our movie reviews and articles on WBAD's website. If the cops show up, you just let us do the talking. WBAD Radio, Washington, D.C., The Bad Tomato. Did we get him to do God? <laughs> oh, I know. We God? Him no, that guy's God. awesome. <laughs> that's Tom, I, that, that's Tom uh, oh. from WBAD, uh, Tom Badalotto from WBAD.net. May not have been modulated. Yeah, so that's... Uh, <laughs> I loved it. It made me kind of feel like he was whispering into my ears. I wanted to make love to somebody yeah, at see? the end of that. I almost mm -hmm. played the clip from Noah there. So let's talk about <laughs> well, what we got coming up. Do we have to? Uh, the hosts for the hardest working podcast on the, on the airwaves here include myself, Paul Preston, here with Lee Caius and Karen Volpe. Adam is out for one more week, but we'll be back in April. Jamie is back again, manning Yay! the board, assuring us that we... sound. I'm just kidding. That's not true. Uh, we're welcoming two guests to the Admirals Club this week. An indie filmmaking power couple, Grace McPhillips and Corbett Lunsford, will sit down with us later Yay! and talk about the trials Yay! and triumphs of doing it yourself. Yes? I will say every bit as handsome as they are powerful. These two. <laughs> They're like Angelina I gotta look, Jolie. I, no, I got to look Pitt. at them. I got to look at them in the living Did room. Did you? Yeah. Ooh. That can go a long way. <laughs> yeah. That can go a long way. I, I know you said no peeking. At the guest, please. I'd makes, rather you not talk to them before the show. It makes them uncomfortable when you peek at <laughs> right. them. Uh, well, this, they're part of a film called The Other One, which will have its world premiere just around the corner. And someone is leaving the movie guy's family today. Ooh. We'll announce that later in the show. Bummer. Is it me? Well, you'll have to stay tuned. Ooh. That's that's a yes. But first, <laughs> movie previews is only we can bring them to you with two new films hitting the multiplexes this weekend. First up, got a headache. No? Well, you do now. Here's a clip from Sabotage. Please don't me! I'm gonna destroy them. <laughs> that 
That is a movie. That for is the record. that is music to. That's a movie to run to. You know how you put on music to work out to? You put that on and just go on the treadmill. It's a movie to run away from. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, that wasn't even edited. That was correct. The clip. That's, that's the last part of the trailer. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And later in the show, Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly return for a beautiful flood. <laughs> no. What did he say? He's going to destroy the world. Ooh. There is oh. a lot of whispering in we this trailer. Did you notice that? No, no. It, yeah, there's always a lot. You know what? It's a lot more important sounding if you it whisper. Is. We should do it the rest of the show like this. Yeah. If I said I wanted to tell you something about what I had for lunch. He even oh. whispers Australian. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, how do you whisper in an accent? Wow. <laughs> right? Just it's like choir. singing. It's like singing. Once you sing, your accent goes away. No. Like John, right? yeah, wait, wait, wait. Slow up. Elton That's John. not well. I thought you meant like a show. That makes me crazy beyond words when people are doing a character and then they sing and they sound like an opera star. You give me a Seymour that drops the accent, I want to punch somebody. So he should sing with the suddenly Seymour yes. accent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, get different actor because there's no reason to drop it. I when, always was baffled when the British people could sing without accents. Now, that's different than when you're doing pop music, but when you're doing, like, character. Like, oh, if okay. Russell Crowe now is Noah were to break out in a song, Ooh, if I'd he dropped whatever... <laughs> and they're all no. British in this Ray If Wingstone. he dropped whatever he did and started singing with an American accent, it would suck. Anthony Hopkins. They were all... Apparently, they were all British. Then the flood came, wiped out all the Brits. <laughs> we can get back to making some real people. Well, that was the all problem. Right. <laughs> that was right. <laughs> get, get back apparently, to making some real people. we know who the assholes were. Right. Mm. Yeah, sinners, all of them. Yeah. Had to lesson, get rid of them. The lesson is God hates the British. <laughs> there you go. We're it saved lovely Emma Watson. Mm. Now, it's only appropriate that our guests this week are indie filmmakers, as we're about to take in a whole heap of independent film next week when we head to the Phoenix Film Festival. Yay, us. We, yay, us. We're going there. We're going to be... Uh, I've never been to Phoenix. It'll be fun. D- yeah, me neither. Right? Now that you mention it. Do you flew, like... Flew through. Do you like through. sand and, and dirt? Yes. <laughs> Plenty of it. There you go. That's why you stay indoors and you watch movies. Welcome right. to Phoenix. <laughs> Here's a rock for you. Well, I see an armadillo. If you're going to the uh, uh, Phoenix no. Film Fest, here are some of the movies I think we're going to be introducing. So right. you'll get to see us uh, doing wackiness. I can't wait the movie. <laughs> to see that. God's Pocket. Oh. Friday at 6.50, screening of that at the Film Fest. This, I believe, is one of Philip Seymour Hoffman's last movies. <gasps> Whoa. That's right. The Certainly, earlier this year, probably the best actor walking. Wow. Now he's, now he's not walking at all. I'm That's surprised they couldn't parlay that into a bigger release. The Phoenix Film Festival is great. Wait, who I'm are just, you? Oh, no, these are where these movies premiere. Then it will oh, get its oh, release. Oh, okay. Because it's oh, Philip right. Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. get in theaters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's also directed by uh, John Slattery from Mad Men. Oh. Roger. Yeah. I think it's got uh, other names in it. <laughs> it's got other <laughs> actors. You can look up at phoenixfilmfestival.com. Yeah. It's got people and music and words. And stuff. I'm kind of excited. We'll be at the screenings of both the uh, Disney Nature's Bears, which we mentioned last week, and the Pirate Fairy, the new Tinkerbell Arrgh. Disney cartoon movie. So, yeah, we're going to just be arguing it up the whole, That'll be a lot the of whole fun. morning. It's a kid's thing. Uh, so, you know. Is it we'll, animated? It is. It's oh, a movie, good. isn't it? <laughs> Is it in 3D? Plus, Sunday, we'll be doing the big uh, GMO-OMG documentary, the For No Good Reason doc with Johnny Depp that we talked about, and the the horror shorts. So there's lots going on. Come find us. When you do, You know, we'll give you popcorn. You know, it, it just occurred to me, Uh-oh. and I apologize, that For No Good Reason is the name of the movie, right? Correct. Because you've been saying for no good reason that Johnny We're Depp. We're going to see this movie for no good reason. For, well, no, I thought There's Johnny a, Depp made. Johnny Depp is the good reason. Oh, it's a fantastic reason. Yeah. He made a documentary for no good reason. For no but good reason. Like, for shits, it's it. also the, the sequel to Shits and Giggles. <laughs> yeah, Shits and Giggles. We'll be seeing that. The three. Uh, I can't wait to see why the fuck not. <laughs> and for those of you who think the Phoenix Film Festival will just be around you know, this coming week and then uh, fade away. Not true. PhoenixFilmFestival.com is alive and well all year long. You can go and see the latest movie reviews there. Go there right now. You can see reviews of Divergent and Muppets Most Wanted. So, Oh, wow. So there you go. I'll that's that. uh, That's stuff to do. We're getting involved this year for the first time. We're very excited. But uh, let's get to our first uh, movie of the Ooh. week. Ooh. Opening this weekend, Arnold do Schwarzenegger. We, have to? we do. Oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger continues his, his streak of films we'll maybe see in Sabotage. I don't say sabotage. You say sabotage. I say sabotage. Lee, let's talk about it. (laughs) Ah, yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger, (laughs) the name that keeps on going. He had a rocky return to the big screen, though. There's that one with Johnny Knoxville and that one space jail one with Sylvester Stallone. 
I mean, did they even give those movies n names? Yes, but do Arnold Schwarzenegger movies even need titles? Shouldn't they be numbered like the symphonies of classical composers? This week in theaters, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's 35th movie. Which I've heard is no sixth movie, but then again, I haven't really liked any of his movies since 14. Yes, and he's still kind of coasting on his cred from two. Stephen Lewis joke. <laughs> That's a Stephen Lewis joke <laughs> Thanks, submitted Steve. from our friend Thanks, Stephen Steve. Lewis. Credit where credit is due, Steve. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. What is Arnold? He's like, what, 100, 112? 66. Still looks like the toughest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. And Schwarzenegger is right at home in Sabotage. <laughs> playing a badass cop with the strangest accent of all the other people in the movie. He's a tough-as-nails DEA agent, or whatever, who <laughs> finds himself targeted after a major cartel bust. As his teammates are killed one by one, he has to figure out something or other. Okay, <laughs> that description has some missing cover pieces. Filmmaking is not about the tiny details. It's about the big picture. Basically, <laughs> he took their money, so they took his family. Well, that actually seems fair, Paul. Mm -hmm. Now, the plot does oh. get interesting in the middle when Arnold is suspected of being on drugs himself, but it turns out that's just how he talks. To show them how this throws a discos. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm a little confused about the plot, Paul. Maybe, maybe if you play a clip, that would help. All right, here we go. Okay, well, that didn't help. So, uh, who are the villains again? The arrest today of a major cartel leader has led to a seizure of millions of dollars in cartel money. Ten million dollars is missing from your cartel bus. Why do you think the cartel's killing your guys? The only way to stop the cartel is to find out who stole the money. The cartel's got your wife and kid. I'm sorry. So, uh... It's the cartel, is it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, thank God Schwarzenegger is on a mission here. Otherwise, well, he'd just be some nut job running around mumbling and shooting people. <laughs> then again, that doesn't sound like a bad movie at all. Well, they did make it, Paul. Here, here's a clip. You be the judge. Stop. Oh, please, you don't have anything I haven't seen before. Mom, would you turn around, please? Or my mom. Both of you <laughs> will shoot. Your mom witnessed a murder. <laughs> and then he shoots everybody, apparently. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Paul, I just have one question. Yes, please. Who else is in sabotage? Who else, you ask? Yes. Oh, well, oh, well we have to do this first. Sorry. All right. You say sabotage. Uh, well, on the verge <laughs> of the NFL draft, we'd love to tell the folks out there in our favorite way possible. Because, you know, the names of the cast members of sabotage... Or sabotage. sabotage. I say sabotage. Sound like they could also be the starting defensive line for the 64 Green Bay Packers. <laughs> oh. And we get another chance to introduce them as if they're in an old NFL Films Presents video. Wonderful Here we bonus. go. The drug war. It's fought on many fronts, <laughs> but no one pays a price higher than the DEA agent. From the front lines of the battle for your future, your sabotage starting lineup. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Joe Manganello. Terrence Howard. Martin Donovan. Harold Pirineau. Olivia Williams. <laughs> She's got a butch haircut in it, so... Olivia Williams. Okay, I'm, I'll go with that. All right, well, there you go. That's the uh, cast of uh, Sabotage. What? Um, Uh-oh. Wait a minute. That, Shut up. That's not everybody. <laughs> Sam Worthington. Josh Holloway. Jermaine Holt. Jared Woods. Kevin Vance. <laughs> Karen Volpe. <laughs> Lee Caius. <laughs> Jamie Clark Elvington. Put that in the back of your... Uh, right? Yeah. Back of your whatever. In the jersey? back of your whatever. Your back, put that in your backside. Oh, yeah. That would take two jerseys. Her I name. need a copy of both of those tracks because I... Absolutely want to roll around town blaring that out of my car. See, now that you could work out, too. Right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Welcome to Wendy's. Can I help you? Yeah, can I get a... Uh, number one. A number one a with junior cheese. junior frosty, a, a single with cheese. <laughs> uh, would you like fries with that? No, thanks. <laughs> All right, that'll be 758. <laughs> Pull the first window. 
<laughs> that should be the soundtrack to everyone. Oh, life. that's wonderful. Well, for once, Paul, it looks like Terrence Howard gets to beat people up on screen. Mm. And fake Jessica Chastain, Mire Enos, kicks ass all over this trailer. Now, if Jessica Chastain herself went into Afghanistan and got Bin Laden, they would have gotten her for the movie. Mm. But she merely orchestrated getting Bin Laden in Zero Dark Thirty. So now we have Mire Enos. Mm. <laughs> For all the catchphrases Schwarzenegger has tried out, his trademark remains that crazy-ass voice. You know, like Kermit flailing his arms when he screams, Yay! It just hits a happiness button inside me that I can't control. It really does. In two weeks in a row now, we got happy things. Oh, and one last thing, just to put it out there. Really autocorrect? You couldn't just once suggest Schwarzenegger after I've typed Schwartz? <laughs> you know it's a word because you know when it's spelled incorrectly. Anyway, go see Sabotage, but, you know, only if you want to. That's the movie. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Paul, can you go back to... You know what I'm. You know what I want to talk about now. You know what I want no to address. One <laughs> that? No. Uh, the, the, give, give, give me the... Um, uh, I don't say so. Yes. I don't say you sabotage. say sabotage. I say sabotage. Okay. Sabotage. I, I will, am willing to bet. Do we all know this is from, is it from Star Trek? <clears throat> uh, this was from some voiceover thing he did. Yeah. yeah. I then, don't know if it was, if he was do- doing ADR or what, but um, yeah, then the director said, you're saying sabotage. So he was corrected. He was yeah. corrected, but I believe that he had already done the episode where we pulled it, where he's talking to the woman and says sabotage. Is that true? Because that goes against my so. theory. I have a theory yep. that Shatner is such an ass <laughs> that he was corrected on but this. But delightfully so, right? Delight- oh, of course. Charmingly so. I mean, yeah, in, like that, in the way that lets you kill your wife and still be oh, everyone's she Jesus. killed herself, Allegedly. Probably. You're right. Um, Allegedly. He didn't... Living with him. Okay. <laughs> but I have a theory that he was corrected, and he, he accidentally said sabotage, accidentally, was corrected, and then wouldn't let it go and insisted... That he, he said sabotage. sabotage. And I, I believe that to this day, he says sabotage just to prove a point. But I think that, I think you're right, because I think he, why not do that if you're him? <laughs> but I think that that scene that we pulled from him on Star Trek was be- much younger and thinner. So I think that it was before. This is, well, this is new information. New oh, shit yeah. has come to light here, Karen. What, what's this. great about that scene is if you listen to the whole thing, he says, he kisses this woman, and then he comes out of the kiss and he, goes right into the sabotage things, you think, oh, maybe got a little happy, you know, d- doing the happy kiss. Tongue, yeah. And he forgot the line, and so he kind of fumbled, fumbled it or something. So he says, sabotage. And then she immediately has to say, what do you mean we're going to be sabotaged? <laughs> so it's all crazy. And then he says, sabotage again. But if you're so right he says about, it crazy. But if you're right about the order of things, then my theory goes out the window. Wow. He, you know, there's people like myself who say things incorrectly and don't realize it. So he could say sabotage. I say roof when it's a. I say rough. When r- you mean roof. Your, your shoe? He, oh, here it is. Is this why you sabotage? See? He just kissed her. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, that was. Oh, uh, well. My shit. This, this is an ad for Charter it Internet, everybody. Sabotage. We, she said sabotage. Yeah. Well, she says sabotage, I say sabotage. <laughs> Is this why you sabotaged my ship? He just kissed her. He can't think straight. Oh, it has not been sabotaged. We, <laughs> we had to make some changes. So you're right. Maybe he just does that. But I, I like to believe he's that much of an ass. I say crick instead of creek. Well, crick is... I'm crick, not being a dick. No, but... I'm just not smart. Care, crick what? is a very specific thing. I went to a crick. Oh, really? Yeah, I played in a Did crick. they have crabs in the crick? They had cray, crawfish. Cray, crawfish. Crawfish? We play with the crawfish. We played crawfish with crawfish. The crawfish. The There's a creek. That's, a, that's another thing. That's a totally different thing. A creek is serene and pastoral. A creek, you're going down and getting muddy and you're, you oh. know. It's not I, Dawson's Crick. I'm from Cherry Creek, but I still call the Cherry Creek Crick a Crick. Crick. <laughs> oh, my God. What is it that you get in your neck? A creek? A you got crink? a creek in your neck? You got a crick in your neck. Oh, I just said crink. <laughs> I got a creek in my neck. This is William Shatner, <laughs> and I would like to invite you to take a journey with me into the 21st century. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, um, yes. does this have anything to do with this stupid movie? <clears throat> no, sabotage. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about that for a second. Oh, it looks like a great television show, right? <laughs> it does really look I like would, a TV show. I would tune in every week. I would you watch know 12 episodes of this. This is it, going up against... Um, uh, I wouldn't watch this over over uh, Breaking Bad. This is going up against Breaking Bad, There's no it? way. No? It does not hold a candle to Breaking <laughs> this Bad. This is so much better it's than It's the same weeds. type of deal. DEA oh. guys looking for meth, getting in uh, over their head. There's nothing the same about this. You've well, seen no Breaking Jessie. Bad? Oh my Karen, God. you drop stuff. You're so excited about I Breaking Bad. I'm upset. Hang on. Slow down. There's nothing. That I, 
the people in Breaking Bad, all of the actors are very phenomenal. And the writing's so good that you like them and then you hate them, but you love that you hate them and then you like them well, again. Well, this is from David Ayer, I should uh, plug, because I do want to see this movie. All right. He wrote Training Day. I do like that. And he like wrote and directed End of Watch. And his sort of tough as nails crime drug stories are his thing. So hopefully, it, I mean, that bodes well for it. Well, and they never get summer releases, these type of you know movies, even though it's Arnold. Well, it comes out in March and... Could uh, could be good. Karen mentioned that Breaking Uh-oh. Bad has a lot of really good actors in it, right? Perhaps you and I need to reread the list of actors <laughs> <laughs> that are in Sabotage uh, to remind her that There's this is a pretty actors. caliber ca- cast as well. No, I'm, I'm sorry, we don't have time okay. for that. So. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, Maybe we do. How does that happen? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Joe Mangiglione. <laughs> Joe Mangiglione. <laughs> I was turning the Remember page. Remember the you don't part watch, about uh, sabotage? I'm just saying. I he thinks to... you don't watch True Blood. <laughs> I meant to say Terrence Howard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, are Moving there on. any anyway, other movies we'll coming out this well, week? Well, 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 let's uh, do, talk quickly one more time about mm-hmm. sabotage because Arnold's pretty fired up in this trailer, right? I mean, Schwarzenegger has been this pissed off. Mm. Since the California State Assembly failed to pass a balanced budget. This is true. Oh my gosh, that's right. He was the governor. Political humor. I forgot. That's right. I... <laughs> now, normally this would be a great time to play another round of... That's right! <laughs> but if we remind ourselves of all the weird things that have happened to Arnold Schwarzenegger's yes. life, you would be so surprised. We go beyond that's right. So we're not calling this episode... That's right! We're calling it... No shit? No shit. And that's Arnold saying no shit. Yeah. For example, not only was he the second actor elected governor of California, but he has a college degree from the University of Wisconsin. No shit. No, no shit. shit. No shit. No shit. Wow. He speaks three different languages, one of which is English. No shit. That's no, right. no, really? No shit? I know. No shit. Wow. Three Here's languages. An, well, those Europeans, they learn a lot of languages. Oh, that's languages. right. Because yeah. every a, 20 feet you're in a different country. Here's right. an example of some of his English. Crush your enemies. See them driven before you. And they had a lamentation of the women. <laughs> no shit, really? What does happen? Well, we all know he became an international superstar bodybuilder, right? All that no oh, shit. No, no shit, shit. No shit he did. That. No shit. That's right. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. Oh, you what? know, as uh, having sex with a woman and coming. What? Oh, he's talking about working out. So can oh, you believe no how shit? I'm in heaven. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm what getting the... the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming... Backstage, when I pump up, when I pose out in front of 5,000 people, I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night. Oh my God. The man was a governor. That would explain the smell in the gym. No shit. That was. No shit. That's why gyms always smell that way, I guess. Because they're coming at home. Well, he's from Austria, but somehow he became a Kennedy. No shit. No shit. No shit. That's because of all the coming. The Kennedys love it. They love that. In 1977, he won a Golden Globe. No shit. No shit. No shit. Wow. New star of the year for Stay Hungry. It, let's put this in perspective for a second. Ray Fiennes, zero Golden Globe. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> no shit? Ray Fiennes, no shit? That is a no yeah. shit. That's no way. That's Not ridiculous. right, right? Yeah. Not right. Some reason right? he was great in right? Schindler's List Not right. in a great year. I mean, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones won the Oscar. You had Leo DiCaprio doing his thing. Ray Fiennes got great. no love off Schindler's List. Not, well, not he was the big kind ones. of a big not giant asshole in it. No shit. No shit. All right. Uh, oh, he was a contestant. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a contestant on the dating game. No shit. I believe that. Just think about it. He's coming all over. Dating game. Oh. You meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> He's no. been selected Mr. World two times, Mr. Universe five times, Mr. Olympia four times. He is an actor. He's studying business at UCLA. What? In Graz, Austria, no shit. No shit. He's Please studying. join me in welcoming to the new dating game the current Mr. Olympia, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, girl number two. These are my it's measurements. No. No, don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Biceps 22 inches, chest 57, waist 33, size 29. What do we have in common? <laughs> Anyway, that was him on the day. Wow, that's no what? shit, man. It's perfect for him. It's pervy. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It's perfect. And finally, he wrote a book. Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. That's bullshit. Shit. You said so. It's all bullshit. That is total bullshit. <laughs> that has got to be How bullshit. did he write a book? It's actually true. What's it called? No shit. It's a... Uh, uh, full disclosure, it was his autobiography. And, uh, and he wrote some fitness how-tos oh, as well. Oh, okay, yeah. But uh, wow. he did put words together God. into a form of a book. That's not he has accomplished do. quite a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Well, he didn't write Don Quixote. How many kids <laughs> did he have from <laughs> he has one woman? Five. Most of them are from Maria. Oh, that's nice. No shit. No yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. And that's right. He slept with his maid. Mm-hmm. No shit. You forget about that after a while. <laughs> All right, let's get on to our next film, because Karen really wants to. Yes, yes One I that, can't wait. You can't wait for Noah. I understand. No. Actually, this next film will remind you that you really don't know your Bible. For example, Karen, yes. who are Adam and Eve? Kim and Kanye's kids. That is incorrect. That <laughs> was you, what I was going with. Right? You better preview this one with me. You might learn something. It's called Noah. Noah! Noah. All right. Finally, the Bible, one of the great foundations of Western culture and religion, gets the serious adaptation it deserves in Clash of the Bible, The Reckoning, The Final Battle in 3D, Noah. (laughs) Noah! (laughs) This is based on the classic Bible tale told time and time again through countless cultures and incarnations. So I think everybody's getting residuals on this one. Noah! Noah! It's about a man who hears voices, constant voices everywhere, telling him that the world is going to end and everyone is going to die. Who knew that Fox was broadcasting back then? Boom! Hey, Fox News joke. <laughs> now, speaking of Fox News, get ready for them to use this movie as proof that global warming isn't happening. And get ready for MSNBC to use this movie as proof that global warming is happening. <laughs> or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, I call bullshit. As we all know, Noah... Noah! I think Maria Menounos, everybody. <laughs> ...builds a boat big enough to hold every... To hold two of every animal, which sounds like a myth. But if you think about it, if they can do it in the movies, then it must be real. (laughs) So let's take a clip of the Noah building his ark and give it a listen. Hooba, 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 hooba. Noah. Who is that? It's the Lord, Noah. (laughs) Right. <laughs> Bold move for Darren Aronofsky to put the laugh track in his movie. <laughs> well, sometimes you have to. Uh, Aronofsky, the director of Black Swan, uh, you know, he directed this he, from that. Uh, he made the movie about bulimic lesbian ballerinas. Oh, yeah. So, who better direct a movie about a story from the Holy Bible? <laughs> I just hope there's an ass to ass scene. <laughs> oh, Requiem for a dream, anybody? Um, right. <laughs> Russell Crowe plays Noah. <laughs> Noah! We gotta stop those after a while. Beefy, hunky it's... Noah. You know, just like in the Bible. All right, Jennifer Connelly plays Noah's wife, a sexy, sultry wife. You know, just like in the Bible. <laughs> and from the looks of it, Anthony Hopkins plays Odin again. You know, Odin from the Bible. <laughs> so everyone on Earth dies, and I have to repopulate the world with Jennifer Connelly? Ooh. Sign me up. Now, although it's based on a book... Which makes it a real movie. Thank you, Lee. It looks like the film's producers are a little scared of a religious backlash. So check out this disclaimer from the website. While artistic license has been taken, we believe that this film is true to the essence, values, and integrity of a story that is a cornerstone of faith for millions of people worldwide. The biblical story of Noah can be found in the book of Genesis. Translation. Our work of fiction in no way is designed to offend your work of fiction. Deal? (laughs) Will this movie win the hearts and minds of God-fearing moviegoers everywhere? Of course. But it probably won't get into the more existential questions, like... Who is this really? (laughs) (laughs) Noah joins an already crowded field of films this year with religious connections. Since January 1st, all of these titles have been released at the box office. Son of God, Noah, Bethlehem, God's Not Dead, The Jewish Cardinal, and Southern Baptist Sissies. No! Muslims and Unitarians, you guys better get up your game. You too, Buddhists, let's go. Like Frozen before it, which timed its release with stingingly cold weather across the U.S., (laughs) this film arrives at the perfect time of year when homeowners across America are enjoying spring thaw flooding in their basements. (laughs) Thanks, Hollywood. (laughs) iTunes is in no hurry to woo us to the theater with their description of the film. Russell Crowe stars as Noah in the film inspired by the epic story of courage, sacrifice, and hope. That could be any movie. That could be Rudy. I wish it was. <laughs> Does Crow steer the raging waters and guide his boat to safe harbor? What, you never saw a Master and Commander? Uh, of course you That was a lot of Noah. That's too much, <clears throat> Noah. You know, more, the closer it gets, the more I want to see it. I want to see it, too. You know, I was originally uh, like, this big old spectacle telling the story of uh, the Bible, you know, is a little uh, 
grandiose and, and surprising from Aronofsky, who's Mr. Indie Guy, made pie and movies like that. But I just keep seeing clips and I keep seeing posters and I keep going, I just want to see that big old end of the world, you know, coming on. I think the, they'll have a grand old time with it. I just look down at my script, and uh, sometimes we don't get a lot of time to proofread. Don't give it away, Karen. And, oh, I'm sorry. Don't give the magic away. I'm thinking of something Paul might have been thinking, and I'm just guessing from his brain. This makes me giggle. I look down at the discussion points, and it says, Crow does look pissed to be outside in his bathrobe in the rain. <laughs> An observation by Steve Schultz, a <laughs> friend and writer for the but show. Yeah. Isn't that how you can find Russell Crowe <gasps> most, pissed most in mornings? The rain. Well, there's All a- he needs is his pick up his wet... Um, Paper. That's all it's missing. I just envisioned him stumbling down some uh, driveway right. in Beverly Hills, Pissed. shaking his fist at the world in his robe. <laughs> Kimono open to the world. Oh. Uh, all angry. I'd watch that. Yeah. <laughs> He's great at being angry. Moody. Oh, God, yes. He screams of moodiness. Uh, but I do imagine an action sequence where they, he saves the dodo bird. You what? know, the dodo bird is like hanging on the... Well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe that's the tearjerker. That's The why. dodo bird's hanging on the outside of the ark. There's no more room. How do you know it's a dodo? No, and it's like a Wilson thing where he goes away. Someone will cleverly go, grab the dodo bird. Oh. Emma and Watson. And then Emma Watson will say yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just throwing this out there, it has <clears throat> nothing to do with Noah, but it has to do with the religion, and I don't know a lot about that, so I'm going to just go into something I know about. The Jesus Parade. Have I ever told you about the Jesus Parade? No, but oh. I really hope it's you coming do up right it's now. It's fantastic. It's up. coming up in a couple of weeks on Good Friday. The Jesus Parade happens. Now, oh, Paul here in I, Burbank? Right behind my house. In North Hollywood. Dude, oh. we're not we're the other side of my fence. So what happened was we moved into this house about five years ago. We're renting, and we used to live in North Hollywood, a different part of it. So when you first live in an apartment or a house for the first year, Anytime something that normally happens all the time for everyone else is new to you. So I was doing the dishes. It was a beautiful day. I had the window open. It was Good Friday. And that's when I usually run out and start yelling at everyone. <laughs> well, you like, would have wanted to. Shut up. And everyone's like, no, this is how life this works is around how it here. Is. Your Grandpa Caius. <laughs> Grandpa Caius. <laughs> so I'm doing the dishes and I hear, Paul, you do it better than me. Can you do it? I immediately think that we are being taken over by some other country. Eggs. Red Dawn, Red Dawn, and man. And I start to get nervous. I'm like, what the, f- what's happening? Because immediately I'm thinking back to other third world countries with the weird sound system. So I go outside and I notice there's a lot of people walking by the fence at the back of our yard. No one ever walks by back there. It's just a car only kind of situation. So I poke my head over like the guy in that TV show that all you can see is his nose. Home Improvement. Wilson. And I look, and there's all these really sad, dour-looking teenagers and their parents walking. They call them emo kids. The emo kids. They're all trying to behave, but they're all kind of walking with their head down and texting while their parents are walking. And then I don't know what's going on. Again, not so good with the religion. I see this (laughs) flatbed truck come around the corner, and there's Roman soldiers, and there's the whole... And it's all in Spanish. And then Jesus walks by. I'm going, I know him. And he's got the cross. He looks familiar. I'm like, I know, I know that guy. And Jesus walks by. And then they stop. Because apparently they're doing the stations of the cross. They've got, they've got nine stops in their trip. They yeah. stop right behind my house. You're, and there's the blasting. And your then black backyard singing. is one of the stops. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Then they get Jesus up there. They pretend to whip him. And I don't think they're the best actors in L.A. Sadly, they could have done better. Had they're they not, just had some audition. Do you need a union. permit for this? They had oh, parking imagine. enforcement. That's the best part. Clyborn is shut down. They have parking enforcement driving their little car in front of it with the light, so you know that this is some serious shit. They wow. have a permit. So they get Jesus up on there, and then somebody reads some stuff in Spanish, and then they pretend to whip him. And I'm telling you, like his costume, sort of the Roman guard's hat's falling off, and it's all kind of, yeah, it's a little... <laughs> kind of goofy. A little low budget. It's a little low budget. <laughs> so then Jesus is like, oh no, I've been whipped and now the people all sing some sort of song and it's creepy as hell and I just want to save him. When's this oh, happening? I totally want to. I want to jump over that fence and be like, Jesus, I'm no, coming. Don't just go save him. We all have to dress like the Avengers <laughs> yes. and save Jesus. <laughs> I bet you Hawkeye anybody, and, we would get arrested so Iron Man. fast. You should build bleachers in your backyard like at Wrigley Field and sell tickets to watch this. Every I will, year. I wanna, when's it happening? Friday. Friday. Every year at Good about 4.30. How do you know? You <laughs> That's how you know. And the best part is, so I got used to it every year it was happening. So now what I do is I take my dog, who's very small and very weird looking, and to give the kids something to look at mm. for the kids, 
I go and I get the dog and I don't show myself. I only show the dog. So the dog's feet are looking. <laughs> floating the, dog. This is like a five foot fence. So his little feet and he just kind of looks at him. They all giggle as they walk by. Because he doesn't know why Jesus is being whipped either. <laughs> I love that you've taken upon yourself yeah, to entertain the, entertain the, the adolescents in this otherwise solemn ceremony. They look pretty solemn. They do look. Yeah, I think they need it. Sad. All right, so that's Noah. That's Noah. <laughs> Basically, Karen invited everybody over for Good Friday. There you go. If you're listening to this, come on. You'll love it. It's awesome. Uh, All right. Well, listen, we're going to take a break, like, you know, the deal, 10 seconds or so at the most, and we will be back with a special guest right after this. Or two. And we are back. That's as much as I can get out. <laughs> that was great. That was now, uh, most fans of the movie Showcast know about Karen, myself, Lee. God, Adam. I hope so. <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> God, I hope uh, please hope you'll know who point. we are. <laughs> and, of course, Jamie on the board. Yes. And yes. We're always uh, messing around here and getting stuff done every week. But we've also had a cleaning lady at the Admiral's Club. I always wondered why it was so tiny in here, because God knows I'm not vacuuming. <laughs> yes, and she came in early for her last night with us. Oh, it's it's her last night. Well, okay, well then I, I guess I feel better. Yeah. Ah! Right. You're sticking around, apparently. Yes. Uh, please welcome Agnieszka Ostrinsky. There we go. Hey! Hey. Thank you, Mr. Paul. It is honor to be here and not to be feather dusting your posters. Well, we heard you were starting That's a new job. That's not a job. euphemism, is it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, no. We heard you were starting a new job tonight, so we wanted to thank you on the air for picking up after us. Yeah. And uh, I, I clean like five places, but this one is my favorite. So, yeah, we're big fans of the show. And, and okay. who is this with you? That's my husband, Vladdy. He's my next ride to next job. Duh. Now, uh, Duh. I've always wondered yes. this about cleaning ladies, if you don't mind. Is, is cleaning really your life's ambition? Oh, no, no. When I lived in Eastern Europe, I dream of working in Hollywood. Oh. And here I am cleaning a movie guy studio. <laughs> you know, how do you say? <laughs> that show business. So you wanted to be an actress? Uh, I still do. I do. And I, I have a late confession to make. Uh, okay. When I clean here after the show, I practice on your microphones. I hope you're not mad. Ooh. Which, which microphone do you enjoy most practicing on? Wait, you practice? There's a right answer. Acting. Uh, <laughs> Calm down, you. Grandpa, <laughs> yours. Yours. You. Yes. It always smells good. <laughs> very good. Smells I brush my good. teeth. How can you practice acting in here? What are you talking about? Well, I take the old movie guy scripts. I read them aloud. And then I, I, I learn the American accents. You see? Oh. So you, you used our show to learn dialects. That's like miraculous. Like sabotage. sabotage. <laughs> Some like, say sabotage. It's like I those two sabotage. guys in Better Off Dead. But they learned English from Howard Cosell. Exactly. That's <laughs> Lane Meyer. Lane Meyer. Once mm-hmm. a, a true, true champion. champion. Could now have just face another face in the crowd. In the crowd. <laughs> a study in moppishness. All right, listen. Yeah. Did, I, did she learn uh, Howard Cosell? I, I don't know the Howard Cosell. <laughs> we don't, we <laughs> don't have Howard Cosell scripts. Let's, but d- demonstrate for us, please. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I have got scripts in my bag. Oh, I want to hear oh, one. Oh, yeah, I want to hear that. That'll be Let's good. Let's do it. Do okay, it. okay. okay. Yeah, like, here is scene from San Diego. This is a Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I okay. will read yeah, for you. Yeah, I said yeah, like I'm from young <laughs> foreign land. Yeah, I will read for you, young fangirl. All right, let's see, last summer we talked about all those funky smelling people at Comic Con. So uh, here we go. I'll give you a little something to work on. Anyway. There we go. <clears throat> um, when you're done getting Neil Gaiman's autograph, I have a shower in my hotel room, and I'm staying with like 50 other people who do cosplay. We're like playing the entire Marvel Universe, <laughs> but you can hang out only if you bring your own towel. Wow, that's yeah, that's, that's not bad, Ignacio. I didn't sense I see why we cut that character, accent. but I understand. Oh, felt like I but was there. Do you have a contemporary monologue? You'll need uh, one of those out in Hollywood. I uh, I have I have last week's sketch about Divergent. Oh, no, sure. We said Divergent. If you didn't listen, go tune into it. It was set in a futuristic Chicago, but no one speaks with a Chicago accent. Well, here I do jealous outside um, Irish Cup. I call her Trish O'Neill. You do an oh. Irish cop. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait hold on. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta hear this. Yeah, I seen uh, that Kate Winslet on the south side. She walks around with a bunch of the tall people who look real mad, especially that one girl with the Dutch boy haircut. You know, you get her on your own, she's nothing special. Nothing I could take her. I'd smack her right through Comiskey Park. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it. I said it. U.S. Cellular Field. That's bullshit. Uh, that's pretty good. I can almost smell the wieners from here. Yeah. Just listening to that. It's okay. called U.S. Cellular Field? Yeah. What is Comiskey Park? Oh, come on. She's right. That's I went ridiculous. to a wedding reception there. At, at Comiskey at Field? At Comiskey Field during What was like, it, for the mayor or something? No, no. It was like during November that you can rent it out as a uh, reception. And it was ah. in the in the big restaurant overlooking the field. That's crazy. Now, do you know the interesting thing about Comiskey U.S. Cellular Field? It's no. one of the few baseball fields that was built with its open end, not facing downtown skyline. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Is now it's a mall. Basically, it, oh, that's right. U.S. Cellular Field. Yeah. All right, well, listen, Agnostic. Agnostic. Oh, I got that wrong again. Sorry. Here, here's the deal. Even more important in Hollywood is the cold read. So to oh, take yes. one of the brand new sketches here based on the film oh. Noah. Noah! <laughs> Karen, you play the casting director, oh, right? Okay. And Agnieszka. Can you play everybody else for us? Um, yeah, how do you say? I'll be back. Bring it on. <laughs> uh, bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably more appropriate. All right, well, let's do this. Ready? Here we go. Right. Let's we'll have to get the whole thing going. All right, go for it. Is there any background music? Uh, no, the beach. Lee will be chatter of other people <laughs> oh, waiting good. to audition. Oh, All that's right. me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're ladies. Coffee, okay. Coffee. Me? Yes. They have to be a girl. They're oh. ladies waiting. Oh. Better. <laughs> All right, ladies, listen up. This is an open call really for the role of Noah's it. wife, so don't be intimidated by all the famous people standing next to you. Just <laughs> slate your name, hold your sides, and make it your own. Who's first? Kate Blanchett. Tell my husband that I don't fear him or his ark or his pair of animals. Tell him that if his flood turns into one of his excuses not to clean my house again, I will place his head on a pike for the world to see. So help me God. Pretty All angry. Right. You know, Thank it, you. That's one of those impersonations you don't think to do. Yeah. That is great. But that's you have good. very nice hair. So who's next? <laughs> I remember when I wrote this, you were going to do all these. Thank God she showed I'm up here. Thank today. God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would have been awful. What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh, chatting. Oh, God, I hope I get it. I hope we really get it. Hi, uh, Lindsay Lohan for Noah's Better Half. Um, can, I, can I start on the art crash on page 65? And that's how all the cat hippos died. No, I'm totally kidding. But they did get hurt. Some girls on the boat said they saw two unicorns, but that's just a rumor. Okay, thanks. And could you please clean that white stuff off your shoes on the way up? <laughs> Next! <laughs> Penelope Cruz. Ooh, hey. Hey, hey it's hey, already sexy. I think this right is here. a topless scene, isn't it? Uh huh. Noah! <laughs> when God saw me build my ark, what did he say about me? He said I was genius, right? <laughs> <laughs> no talent. He not talking about talent. He said genius, genius. Mira me. And dice que soy loco de pensar que una mujer podría construir un refugio. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you very no, much. God said your entire arc idea was stolen from me. Hey, hey, hey. Vicky, Christina. Hey, <laughs> hey, Vicky, Christina, Barcelona. Grazie. All right, everyone. De nada. We're, we're gonna take Grazie five minutes. Italian. I'm not the one doing good voices. <laughs> and remember, you better all look like your headshots. All right, there you go. Yay! That's good. Agnieszka, I mean, who knew, right? Congratulations. Nice. You have won the Accent Olympics. Yeah, I was wondering real quick, though, could you uh, could do an outgoing voicemail message sounding like uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson? Uh, it's, it's not. Actually, it's not for me. It's it's for Adam. Oh, Lee, really. please. Oh. I've got some got... two girl dialogues for next month's preview Ooh, of the other woman. Girl. We could maybe oh. practice that during the break, and then we. Karen, more listen. Women in what the show. she really should be doing is voicing our Phoenix Film Festival promos. I mean, we're sitting on a gold mine here. Oh, you know what? No, I am flattered. You all want me, but I cannot be late for my first night at the Works of Dreams. What? But wait, do you mean DreamWorks? Ah, oh, that is the name. Yes, 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 yes. Mr. David, Mr. Steven, Mr. Jeffrey. I like him a lot. We were so friendly. And when they hear me practice your scripts, they want me to speak for like cartoon. And I promise I make, uh, how do they say? 500 grand plus points on back end. Yeah, wow. that's uh, Doesn't showbiz. say much, but it's important when he speaks up. This yeah. 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 <laughs> Only when it counts does this man open his mouth. Mm. All right, well, shit, take us with you. The, but the, who would do your show? Well, we could just do the show at DreamWorks. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that'd be yeah, great. It's not a problem. We're taking oh. it on the road. We went to the Oscars red carpet setup. <laughs> oh. Well, <laughs> listen, you're a good sport, all right? And and, and I, you owe us a finder's fee, I think, 
for lending you the scripts, which we didn't even know yeah, we were lending. Yeah, us, oh, were you? Thank you, thank you. I miss you all. And, all right. and goodbye, Miss Jamie on the board over there. Right. And goodbye, Mr. Paul. Hey, no. And goodbye, Karen. Bye. And Grandpa Kayes. Uh, oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Goodbye. All this right, means Agnieszka. that we're going to have to clean the studio from now on. I know. Agnieszka and Vladdy, everybody. That's, uh, she's saying goodbye. Get you. that goodbye. Vladdy back in here. You've only just met her. But I we'll be back Vladdy. after a short break with more guests, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Someday the curtain opens And that was where you were I feel that it can We are back, and the music you hear is from the band Mysterium. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Mysterium. 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 Cool. Mysterium. Which features our next two guests, who are musicians and filmmakers. He composed music for the award-winning comedy Fitting and the award-winning dramatic feature The Other One. Yay! And she is the award-winning actress starring in both films. The Other One has its world premiere April 4th at the Palm Beach International Film Festival, correct? Yes, oh, that's cool. Right. Please welcome Corbett Lunsford and Grace McPhillips, Yay. everybody. Yay. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks. Also known as Agnieszka, Agnieszka. and Vladdy. Yeah. That was really impressive. Oh, my God. Grace. Mm-hmm. You guys Thank are you. That was very cool. Because we were talking about this the other day. Somebody did an impersonation that we never thought to do an impersonation of. People who you just don't think. Nobody thinks to do Lindsay Lohan. Do you really think to do that? That's brilliant. Kate Blanchett, that's brilliant. Yeah. I never would thought, never would have thought you could do a Kate Blanchett. But yeah. you know what? I close my eyes. It's if she's standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way I want her around too. <laughs> With my eyes. Only just imagining Lindsay Lohan around. Oh, oh, yeah. Lohan. oh well, I often imagine Penelope Cruz with my eyes closed. But that's, that's true. a whole other story. So how did you how did you figure out you could do Kate Blanchett? Um, and what is it you hear when you hear her voice that I'm not hearing? But then I hear it when you do it. When I hear you do it, I go, Oh yeah, she sounds like Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Uh, you know, I just, frankly, I love Kate. Um, I, I like to watch her a lot. and uh, I'm with her, you on both counts so far. I deep passion that comes forward. So that's where, uh, that's where, I don't, I, I just grabbed her. Um, last weekend I saw a comedy, I went to a comedy club and I saw a guy do Tom Hanks, Vince Vaughn. What? And Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. This, oh again, gosh. you got to do people nobody else does. And yeah. his whole Hanks was just, I can't remember the situation he was in, but he totally nailed the, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, that was oh. all the high Tom Hanks. That's great. And his his theory was, this guy named Jonathan Kite, he's on Two Broke Girls. He, uh, he did a, his whole bit was Mark Wahlberg's always out of breath. Doesn't oh, matter what terrible. the scene is, what's going on. He's it's always, a bad time, Bob. <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on? What's your problem? <laughs> you know, like, and it was hilarious. Because then he started doing Cage out of breath. <laughs> Okay, you know, and then he had his whole scene together. It was really funny. It was very funny. Again, just two guys nobody else does. Cage yeah, is starting to get out there a lot well, now. But I mean, did you hear the one uh, that Ira Glass, Fred Fred Armistead, Fred Fred Armistead, Armistead, yeah. Armistead, Armistead, Armistead. Let's Armistad. call him Fred La Armistead. Um, <laughs> Fred from Portlandia. Yeah, right. he he did Doppelganger. They had a whole thing on Doppelganger, and and I don't want to give away the spoiler alert because it was really good. But he well, did, did he impersonate Ira Glass, Glass, and you could not tell they were. That's they were awesome. talking back and forth, oh, and it was amazing. Great. Yeah. That now, the problem great. with Ira Glass is that all his little minions start talking like him. Mm. Not sounding, but they use the same cadence and the same sentence structure. And they. Yesterday, a boy went into a room. He saw a chair. Nailed it. <laughs> he thought he'd sit down. But did he? It's that kind have of you, Have you ever heard the show? <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into that one. Here, open this door, Corbett. Come on in. Walk on in. That's funny. Uh, So let's talk about your film. Uh, The other one, um, it is uh, about, tell us, because it's about a mother, uh, the clip I saw, I've only seen one little clip, I didn't see the trailer. Um, It seemed like you play someone whose mother has dementia of some kind, Parkinson's Mm -hmm. perhaps, so you tell us. Uh, Well, you know what, actually I love when Corbett delivers this line, so you go for it. All right, I'm serious about the the long line. So a woman... Uh, survives a school shooting and her husband who is another teacher does not she returns home to take care of her mother who is suffering from dementia and when she's there she discovers that her entire life is a lie wow now that mo- I want to see that movie right? there are ghosts flying There's... in the face of all the machismo out there today mm. yeah you know Fuck with that. your Noah mm-hmm. and your uh, sabotage Noah. 
Uh, <laughs> now we have this uh, good family drama, and people can go to the Palm Beach Film Fest and, and watch. Yeah, it. well, yeah, come on down to sunny Palm Beach, um, <laughs> April fourth. We actually got the Saturday night eight thirty slot. It's our world premiere. Fantastic. Yeah, they good gave us a great you. screening, mm-hmm. and yeah, we got three screenings. So let's fill the house. But as a guy who uh, is you know setting out, I've made some shorts, setting out to make a feature, hopefully soon. Tell me about the stuff you did at Sundance. Oh, okay. Because uh, you were invited to speak there? I was, Big yeah. Big deal, right? Yeah. Oh, it, oh was yeah. A, it was a great honor, a really fun place to kind of launch and tease the audience about the feature coming out. So uh, HP ended up donating to our pr- our film uh, the HP Z820 Red Edition Workstation. Yeah, I know. It sounds like it's, it's, it's really about compliments the, the Red Tell them about the first year, though. Um, but... Literally, you go back to Sundance 2012, right? No, 2013. Oh God, it was that soon. Um, I got the. I saw this machine and was like, Oh my God, that cuts time down tremendously because it's made for the red camera, and that's where you get really slowed up sometimes with the red. And um, anyhow, I was just really inspired. I went back home and I saw this director that I knew who had cast me in a short that I thought could have been a feature. I said, Hey, do you want to make a movie? He said, Yeah. And I said, Great. Let's uh, let's do it this way. I want to be a not for profit. I want to raise money that way. And he was like, okay. And um, he goes, well, when do you want to shoot? And I said, April. And, and it was January. And that was January. <laughs> and so then I called HP and I was like, hey, HP, I want to make this movie in like 10 days on your computer. And mm-hmm. uh, and then I called him again. And then I called him again. Mm-hmm. And then I called him one more time. And I was like, so I'm, look, I'm really serious about this. And we're like crowdfunding and doing all this stuff. And they, they jumped on board. And it was lovely because we were editing as we were shooting. That's the big deal, right? Of, yes. the, of the of the system or whatever you call it. Yes, it was it was unbelievable. No transcode time. You can just literally put the red card right in there, and you can start working um, in uh, Adobe. Adobe's like made for it. So so we were editing real time, right on set, and that's really where you save time because you know when you're shooting, money's just like flying out the door, and when you don't have a lot of money. You know, you need to conserve your time. So at the end of the day, our our director was able to sit down with the editor and see real dailies and and edits and how it was coming along. And, you know, frankly, you start to lose time sometimes on those really tight shoots and you have to make decisions. And uh, we were able to say, no, we don't need that. So HP, Red and Adobe, you mentioned all these different uh, companies are working together to make sure it all complements one another absolutely and and you don't run into operating systems clashing or anything oh yeah yeah it's a it's a really great thing that they've come together on this and it's just saving the indie filmmaker a ton of time and money so hp red and adobe should be sponsors of the movie guys the movie guys where we talk about your you and your quality uh no, but when you're editing the HP Adobe Red movie, guys, yeah. right. I, well, I, I got no problem with that. <laughs> I do have to put another shout out there. We're from Chicago, and Columbia College is one of the film schools. We've got a couple film schools, but they really came on board and um, and donated a lot of equipment, and supported us, and we hired like 35 of their alumni. So wow. you know, so when you're cutting on set, you still at the end of everything go to a final sweetening, go to a final yeah. cut, go to a final. Absolutely. Okay. So we wrapped. Um, we shot for. 13 days, uh, starting in April, and then we took a teaser trailer to Cannes and started pitching it before we were even done with the film. We ended up having to do four more pickup days in July. We came back. We had to film a school shooting in Chicago. Mm. 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 It pushed things back a little bit. Um, Luckily, the Catholics came out, and they helped us actually right by Kaminsky Park. Oh, Yeah, Bridgeport uh, Catholic Academy. Did you say Kaminsky? Uh, what, what did I just say? Kaminsky? Kaminsky. I think it's Kaminsky. Do you say Soldier's Field? Is uh, that you? You're the one? Soldier's <laughs> Field, yeah. No. Uh, Wrigley, yes. Anyway. You got that one right. That, that other one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I live on the north side. And um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I, we did four days in July and then... Catholics were coming out. Yeah. It was all crazy. It was crazy, but we were able to put together because we, we had been editing along this whole time. By the end of September, we had a final cut, which was kind of unreal that do you find the quality of the red to be what you want because i've I've heard a lot of varying opinions about its its final quality does it look oh god no orbit it's it's may i yeah so just this morning we were at the last standing film lab i think in the country Mm -hmm. photochem and they were showing us the final cut which is the cinema package that they're going to show in the theaters and uh there were things showing up. There was like dust on the camera lens. I was like, oh my God, there's a piece of dust on that camera wow. lens. That we had yeah, never seen really before. 
and this is this we are we're actually um doing HD output. We're not even at the 4K. Wow, okay. and it's it's beautiful. So the answer to the question is yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. So it's red, all the same. Like we were definitely. talking about, you know, audio stuff earlier. Yeah. You can't really tell the difference. Yeah, I remember. It's all when good. did Zodiac come out? Do you remember when that movie came out? Was it like mm. Zodiac, the movie. Yeah, about Jamie, the killer. Jamie's going for a phone. About the killer. Yes. What's that? No, it can't no, be. No, earlier than that. Because right? when I went to a screening for that, it feels like it was just yesterday. Oh. That they were celebrating the tapeless shoot. 07. 07. Wow. And Fincher was like, we're not using any tape. We got this thing. And they show you like this huge thing like the size of a giant garbage can. I know. This stores all of our footage and we don't have any tapes. <laughs> Which at the time was like, why is that huge garbage can better than a small <laughs> tape that could hold everything? But, you know, in just seven years, boop, boop, boop. Well, I mean, yeah. Have you seen the Scarlet? It fits in the palm of your hand. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's interesting with those big cameras, though, that, you know, they didn't want to, the camera companies didn't want to get make people lose their jobs, right? So you still had to have all these people taking care of the camera, so you had to make it as big as you needed it. Yeah, it's a union town, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, look what I found. Let me, let me play this little clip from the other one. <gasps> oh, it's got a little intro to it. Oh. I brought it up on YouTube. I could have oh. edited these things ahead of time. Oh, here we go. I should explain what's happening because this is a very. Uh, <laughs> it, it starts did, out. That's my favorite of, part. Did she, we catch you off guard with the show? She's drinking the coffee. Oh man, she that's my favorite part. She just bit of into a sandwich. She was delicious. Yeah, so this is the first night uh, that she's back at home with her mother. You better not sneak that boy into your room, young lady. Mom. I know what you're doing. It's not proper. Mom, I'm 34 years old. And there's a crux of your movie right there, right? Wait, wait. Wait. Wait for it. No, David's not here. Oh. Oh. There's Busted. the crux of the movie. There's the crux of your movie. And you know David's not. I insist there. my movies have cruxes. Would there be another crux if we kept playing? The, it? Actually, yes. Cruxless yes. movies. Yeah, I, have I mean, no there are twists and turns all in this, and it's actually a multiple kind of watching film. A lot of people miss things on the first time, which I kind of like, like. Dust on the lens. <laughs> <laughs> there Apparently. You go. Well. <laughs> do you think you could get back to Sundance with this film? Are you going to submit? No, no. We, I mean, no. because basically the timing didn't quite work out. I mean, to have that opportunity to be at the HP uh, Sundance house and give a speaker series um, concept to completion in 10 months lecture was amazing, but um, I don't want to wait around. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm ready to roll on to oh, the yeah. next one. I've got two more features and a series that I'm you know, kicking out there. And yeah, I have a high metabolism for work. So yeah. Cool. Now you're a friend of Steve Schultz, a writer on our show because Indeed. of uh, you from Chicago and you live mm -hmm. there now. Totally. You're out here for just a spell, right? Yep. So uh, what have you gotten out of the Chicago film scene? What has that provided for you? Because I know when I was there, I would have belonged to something like that. Wasn't a lot of it going on. Not much of a scene when we were there. When we were there in the 90s, yeah. I mean, film was still $3,000 for whatever film stock you right. needed to buy. Mm -hmm. But what's going on there now in that in that scene? Um, there, there's a ton of opportunities in the indie world. I mean, granted, the tough thing is, as a union actress, you can still work on them. They've, we've got such low budget agreements now. I mean, it doesn't fill your pockets, but... Chicago's had this huge resurgence of TV. Mm -hmm. I uh, saw some things just know. got picked up again. Yeah, mm -hmm. Siren, absolutely. Siren, the thing that they just opened there? Uh, uh, Sirens like, is the yeah. Dennis Leary comedy show. In fact, they had a food truck coming around Chicago for promo. Oh, cool. I know. I was like, That's how you get right. people. Yeah. Right. Give yeah, me a hamburger. You know. <laughs> totally. I'm in. I'll watch your show. And then I'll call an ambulance. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the ambulance says, you know, yeah, another Choke show. Choke on, on this. That's the promotion. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the great thing is it's also it's also, um, you know, filling the pockets of our crew so that when those shows do go on hiatus, they do have the leisure of coming out and working for 10 days for one hundred dollars a day. You know, everybody on set and, and making these great works of art. And so people come together at this meetup. Yeah. And oh. just all support each other's. So the Chicago Acting and Film Meetup, which Steve Scholes and I um, help organize, is actually just for actors. No directors, Ooh, no cast. Like, yeah, just I screen know. actors. Too. Just And just film actors. So if you're on the stage and you've never done a film, sorry. Hmm. What if I'm on TV? And, uh, no, no, that works. That's oh, film. Okay. Ah, That's sure. film. Yeah, web series, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, we, we wanted a safe environment, frankly, where we could actually 
shoot the shit and talk about what was happening with certain directors and in auditions and agents and um yeah we Speak, created speaking it speaking of tv and movies and we were having this talk earlier between sabotage and breaking bad um why is it do you think this is just a question for anybody i don't know if i brought it up to the whole table yet house of cards is a really good show that everybody loves if mm-hmm. house of cards were a movie they wouldn't go see it why is that it's in their living room is it just accessibility or is it content? Because it's content that you wouldn't go out and see in the theater. There's a lot of people you know, who l- will Not watch. like they would the Avengers, but Avengers size numbers could go and watch That's, on Netflix. We'll I, never know because they don't release numbers. I think but, there's a lot of adult Americans who don't want to go to the theater. I agree. And they'll watch something very challenging that has a lot of uh, grit and a lot of quality to it in their home, but they're not going to go see it at the Cineplex with some annoying lady who brought her kid. Grandpa guys ain't going. Right? No. <laughs> Too and, you know, I think the kid thing is actually the important thing because I think there's a lot of people who, frankly, don't want to pay for a babysitter yep. who can put the kids to bed at 8, 8.30, whatever, and then just veg out on the couch mm-hmm. and watch three episodes of whatever they want. Is this the symptom of a $15 ticket? No. No? No, I don't think it's so. It's a I lot think more it's convenience. Things. I think mm-hmm. it's... Mm-hmm. It, uh, you s- how do you say it? Accessibility? Accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I say accessibility. Did I say accessibility? Yeah. I say accessibility, you say accessibility. Yeah. Accessibility. (laughs) Accessibility? (laughs) Do you say creek or crick? What the hell's Uh, wrong with you? A crick. Crick. I'm from Alabama. Crick. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Mm -hmm. who are you to talk? (laughs) Crick girl. Uh, So um, let's talk about a question I ask everybody who comes on the show. What's your favorite movie of all time? This goes for both of you. Unless you share it. Mm. We do not. We are married and we do many things together. Yes. My favorite would be The Game with Michael Douglas. What? Wow. The, the Fincher film? Yes. Wow, I've never heard that one before. Really? really? I think that is one of the best. Jamie movies. loves it? Also, from a musician's point of view, if you actually listen to that movie, the soundtrack, the music literally does not stop for two hours. It's constant music. There's mm. something happening. Yeah, which Different, is like, uh, not just score, but always no something. No score. No, oh, literally. Like, oh, the yeah, score never little, stops. Little doodle, it's like just doodling around huh. all the time. Yeah, and there's just like stuff. Well, this is a little unfair because Paul Paul didn't actually set up the question correctly. He, he, oh, no. He should have let you know that there are wrong answers. <laughs> so, Did I answer correctly? Right. I think his answer is acceptable. Think he says this every Okay, it's acceptable. Yeah. It's acceptable. Yeah. The game. The game, yeah. yeah. And Grace? Um, uh, well, I have a lot of favorite movies, so I, I'm one of those girls who switches all, all the time. But right now, um, one of my favorites is Fifth Element. Wow. You know, if I was going to go in the house and just turn something on right now, mm-hmm. Fifth Element. Fifth Element. Luke Basson going nuts. Amazing. I love it. I mean, how fun is it to say multiplex? <laughs> multiplex. You ever try multiplex. accessibility? That's Access- fun. <laughs> accessibility, yep. <laughs> At the multiplex. Yeah, yeah the and multiplex. like, please help. I couldn't get past Tucker and Ian Holm. Totally Those you do two that guys made, drove me nuts in oh, that movie. Yeah. Really? You didn't like really? the special effects? I do, Luke Besson's sense of humor overall, much like Boz Luhrmann's, neither of them really worked for oh, me. No, but I everything love else that. both of those directors do is phenomenal. But the mm. sense of humor, they lose me. Uh, I feel like if I could watch Chris Tucker just do that for the rest of my life, I would. Yeah, I yeah. love when he's fucking the uh, airplane stewardess for some reason. That's one of the best lines when they're going up and her legs are like. <laughs> 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 so silly, so silly, and they did it. <laughs> these are these are groundbreaking favorite films of all time. We once mm-hmm. had two Citizen Kanes in a row here week after week. Yeah, you guys are wow. breaking the mold. But what is that's that? Good. That Thank I mean, you. that's just you're welcome. That's, that's good. Is that a safe choice, Citizen Kane? Citizen Kane. It truly is. A, is school? It's, it's film school. Safe, but you can't also can't be wrong, right? Or no? maybe it's just pretentious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's People that. Wanna, yeah. But then again, Paul Valancourt, who was in here. Broke the mold, I think, with Hellboy. That's right. Yeah, he said Hellboy. I was like, all right, now we're going to get all sorts of crazy What's a wrong answer? shit here. I don't know. Lee, what is a wrong answer? Anything that's not Tom Cruise. And Cena Man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We should you... be adding a segment. What's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 I've got one. Tropic Thunder. Good yeah. point. Hey, that's great. Yes. great. Qualifier. 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 Or Magnolia. Yeah. yeah. I like watching handsome men make asses of themselves on purpose. I think yeah. that's really What an extremely cool. hard you question. You must have been enjoying is. this show immensely. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. What is, I mean, <laughs> The Firm, Rain Man, Risky Business. Every t- okay, the two, the two examples really I give, 
every time you get down on, well, actually, Leo has turned the corner on me because there was a while where Leo Di, Leonardo DiCaprio was kind of a joke when he did the beach, and he he wasn't a serious actor. Oh, but th- that's sad because he was trying to be. A he serious was trying actor. so hard, so hard. He's now a very good actor, and I, I will see anything he's in. But before that happened, before he made the turn with Departed, in my opinion, I would always defend Leo with Eat What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Mm-hmm. Go back and watch What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and you know, everything goes away. And I used to do that with Tom Cruise and say, Go back to Rain Man. That is an amazing acting yeah. job that he did there. And then he just started kicking ass with yeah. everything, and I love him. So, <laughs> so now he's legitimized himself across the board. So we'll change the question. What is your favorite Tom Cruise yes, movie right. when, when guests arrive here? All right. Yeah. Oh, but there was one thing I wanted to ask quick about the indie stuff before we get away from it. Uh, what is Fractured Atlas? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Fractured Atlas is an art service organization out of New York City. And they actually work with all kinds of artists, musicians, sculpturists, whatever. But the really cool thing that they do is they can allow an arts project to be fiscally sponsored, which means that people can give you donations and then the government gives them a tax break, Mm. even if Section 181 goes away or whatever. But um, yeah, so that's why we were a not-for-profit sponsored film. People, people gave us forty thousand dollars in tax deductible donations. Yeah, nice. the financing was actually pretty exciting. What Grace did, so she she did you know a couple different social media things and raised forty thousand dollars from people that you know eh, what they say you know your dentist and your family and your neighbors and all these people and then got HP to pitch in with the computer which would have cost like twenty five thousand dollars and um, and then a whole bunch of other donations and it's a good chance to kind of cash in your favors and see yes. if the people who have promised you stuff in the past are actually serious about it with a first feature that's a lower budget you know like this movie probably was around you know a quarter of a million tops um, and then if you're going to make something bigger later you know that those people were actually serious when they said you can borrow my yes. crane or my house or whatever it is oh. mm-hmm. yeah. did you have to give back uh, like with Kickstarter oh, I'll give you a well, and a so CD of the score when we're done, or I'll write that, my name on a piece of toast and mail it to you. I, <laughs> I hate that kind of shit. Um, and you know what? We found that our funders hate that shit too. Like nobody wanted any of the giveaways that we were giving. Granted, maybe they weren't the greatest giveaways, but also it saved us a shit ton of time. I am getting profane. Sorry. <laughs> it's the it's right. Oh, it's you're, it'll you're do in, that to you. You were, you know, you were Agnieszka and you were lovely, Agnieszka. but now it's like, no, I'm a producer. Oh, <laughs> Time to talk producer talk. Totally. Yeah. Um, so actually in our second fundraising campaign, we didn't give any good giveaways. We just like gave thank yous, literally. We made a video at the end of each week saying thank you to everybody and, and people loved it, you know? Mm. Um, so, no, I don't think you have to do that. Uh, we went through Indiegogo, too. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are vastly different. Mm-hmm. Kickstarter actually doesn't work with not-for-profits. Indiegogo does work with verified not-for-profits. Also, when you're a verified not-for-profit, Indiegogo waives their fee. Hmm. Yeah, which is nice. You keep more money. Mm-hmm. And you uh, get the money immediately. So when somebody donates $100, literally, the next day it's in my account. Oh, they're not waiting for some aggregate. No, thing, right? that's the big. That's what I've heard. The big deal is it's great between those two. Yeah. All right, cool. And so, what's next? Uh, we have, you talked about the two features or something else or yeah. a series or something. You're all crazy. What do you got? I know, I know. Uh, so we have two features. Um, there's one called Wilderland Road right now. I th- we'll see where that name goes. Let me know what you guys think about it. You guys are good on titles but it's a thriller and we actually have just been invited to the second round of the Sundance Creative Producing Lab which would be amazing so cross your fingers for that Um, it's going to be directed by Montana Mann she's one of the youngest female directors in the DGA and she's awesome and um, so we're shopping that out to talent and attaching that It'll shoot down in Alabama, where I'm from, and that's actually going to lead into another feature, which is a fried green tomatoes kind of story. I know, right? I we smell need, Alabama. We need more of that, right? And uh, the woman in the past is another Alabama girl, Zelda Fitzgerald. So, yeah. Oh, who, oh for Jamie who just don't said, know, oh. F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. Yes. Yeah. She was a... She was the first vibrant. flapper. Did oh, you guys okay. see so a the, movie the, called... Oh, okay, so that Zelda Fitzgerald. Yeah, yeah, there was a movie called Great Gatsby. Oh, Zelda <laughs> Fitzgerald. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, something called yeah. Midnight in Paris. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, so she's mm-hmm. the real Daisy Buchanan. That line, Beautiful Little Fools, that's oh, hers. Yeah. yeah, so that's what we're calling the movie, <laughs> Beautiful Little Fools. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Cool. I want to go back. I, I still want to go back to the hometown and make a movie. I know. But it, nice. my hometown would be full of resentment <laughs> in the story. Yeah. So that's just how I guess I envision my hometown. Anyway, uh, let's Either move on. Either that or meth. Anyway. <laughs> um. That's not a joke. Let's move on to something uh, we play here every week, and you guys can join us. What did you see this week? Wait for it, Grace. Wait. Wait. There you go. There you go. 
What did you see this week? Panel? Well, we all saw the same thing. We all saw the Muppets at Three your birthday. Three of us saw the Muppets Most Wanted. Yes, we went out for a big birthday thing. There were like a dozen of us, and we saw Muppets Most Wanted. And I'm getting a little backlash from people who's, who don't like it. What? I what? thought it was hilarious. Are they un-American? What's happening? They, they are un-American, says Sam Eagle. They don't like Sam Eagle. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. I, it was exactly the movie I wanted it to be. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Understand. I think uh, somebody, maybe it was even Adam from Movie Guys, said that he laughed so much he wondered if children were. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. I, I was saying there's Bergman jokes. There's like, yeah. you know, it's all kinds of crazy jokes that I loved. And of course, they're self referential. And a lot of it's about Kermit or Kermit's uh, evil twin. So you know you're not, you're not skimping out on on the main characters. You know it's not suddenly oh let's let's follow Walter the whole movie like the last Muppets movie did, which I thought was yeah. good too. But he was a brand new character. I thought that was strange yeah. to yeah. follow a brand new character. Just mm. comedy, 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 and songs. Now I've gone on record as as uh, stating the, what I think the funniest thing in movies is. Yes. yes. Which is a Muppet flying through the air and smashing into a wall. Yes. Okay. So that is to me that is the <laughs> pure essence mm-hmm. of comedy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And in the first five minutes of this movie, there's two Muppets two launched. Two of them. Boom. Shoot the cans. <laughs> two. Across. across the stage. So for me, I was already on cloud nine for the rest of the movie, mm-hmm. so they set me up. But to Adam's comment, I did notice that there weren't a lot of giggles and guffaws and snickers by the uh, by the children. In we the were audience. drowning them out. We just, ah, I think so, yeah. you know, just dying at the You need to teach kids what's... Jokes. Well, right, right. That's right. Yeah. You they, teach them what's they funny. They don't naturally know what's funny. you got to force it into them. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and I think what they're learning isn't so great. We went and saw that Despicable Me uh-huh. repeat after we hadn't seen the first one, which probably was a big mistake. And the children were laughing every five seconds at, like, retarded yellow blobs going... Bloop, 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 bloop. Mm. Wow. The 19th time they laughed, we said, oh, oh no. no. They yeah, they're a little the lost on me, oh. those, those, those minions. Yeah. They, get, they act weird, but I don't see a greater purpose other than here's weird shit. Yeah. And so I kind of go, that's funny, but... What else? Yeah, I'm yeah. just afraid that we're raising idiotic humor. We are. Like it's going to be stupid, but it's not stupid enough. <laughs> but that some some of the problem that is television. This thing we were praising a few minutes ago because the best television of all time is going on right now, and the worst television of all yes. time is going on right yeah. now. And I love movies because they will never have reality television. They tried from Justin to Kelly, bombed. The real <laughs> Cancun tanked. Get mm-hmm. your reality television, stick it back on the small tube. The movies won't have it. But here's something I smashed my fist. (laughs) But here, here's something that that will tell you about my approach to the Muppet movies is that uh, when we got there and we're standing in the lobby waiting, and I started seeing all these children around me. That's when it finally occurred to me, oh, that's right, this is a children's movie. Because I certainly don't regard it as such, because I know what I'm in for, and I know this could be really clever, well-done humor. And it wasn't until all these rugrats were biting my ankles. I'm like, oh, crap, that's right. It's, and it was like Sunday at 4. We couldn't have picked the worst time for kids. I know, kids. there's children all, everywhere. All the stars kids. are in their 40s and 50s, like yeah. Tina Fey, Ty Burrell, <laughs> Ricky how, Gervais. How are the original songs? Um, the opening's great. Yeah. We're, it's about all about them doing a sequel. So oh, they yeah, sing about it. Funny. Big yeah. number. It was pretty funny. And I like the fact that somebody brought up the fact that they did 16 movie, other movies. Which That's character right. brought that up? He's like, by the way, um, we've done other 16 This isn't movies. a sequel. This isn't done. a sequel. <laughs> oh, I can't great. remember who brought that up. Yeah, but the, you can always go to the bathroom during the Miss Piggy ballad. Yeah. <laughs> not, not great. No. Not great. There's a funny, the did you know there's Eagle. an app for that? <laughs> Go into the bathroom? Yeah. yeah. Th- there's an app with that. Uh, oh, some, there is. Some, yeah. It's like, you know, AMC mother, bathroom. son duo yeah. go into a, a theater and then they program when you should go to the bathroom so you can just look up any. And, and when you go <laughs> oh, to the theater, sorry. then you just know, like, oh, you should go now because it's That's good. AMC I, has that. AMC Theater Chain. I think that the one that I l- thought was most clever and grew on me was Sam the Eagle duet with that other French guy. Yeah, with Ty Burrell. Great. That yeah. was great. They were questioning people for this. There's a heist in the movie. And what? it was all done to a big song. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yet it's not the great Muppet Kids. Oh, yes. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that, that song, song. That was a good song. Yeah, yeah that Patter oh, song was really funny. Mm. Yeah, so, I loved The Muppet and Me last morning. Yeah, won the Oscar, right? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. great. Um, I also saw Draft Day in advance. The Kevin <gasps> you did? Costner That's movie. Yes, bad. I did. It was not great. Mm-hmm. Easy. Which, well, it's about which... Cleveland. It can only be so good. <laughs> oh, that much that For that much, you should go. <laughs> I'm going to go. Yeah. But seriously, if it's a movie about Cleveland, you can only make a movie about Cleveland so good. It can only be so good, <laughs> and then it's going to fall apart right at the end. Mm. Yeah, there's some gaping uh, script flaws in there that you just kind of go, why did you know, it was so easy to fix? And they didn't. And then, mm. you know, it got past the 
seven hundred names you see go by at the credits at the end. Got did then no one say anything? Nobody raised their hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I felt like nobody raised their hand uh, about the billboard. Have you guys seen the promotion? It's, I've seen a couple of them for drafting. Isn't isn't it? No, isn't it Kevin Costner? Just yeah. standing there, Just right? Turn, yeah, like mm -hmm. boring. And yeah. then he's got a, um, yeah, another one where it's just like the side of his face and not even the good side. He's got the football. Ooh, up, right? oh. Yeah, and he's like holding the, the football and like his nose is so far off that you can't even really see his profile. And you're like, that's an ear. <laughs> and the football. I think, I think they're just saying Costner sports. You coming? <laughs> yeah. We would if it was baseball. We're, you know, yeah, we're, exactly. we're, yeah. we're a golf football. movie and three baseball movies in. You're, right. you're, you're coming, right? Right. Now. Not for football. So. Did you two see anything this weekend? We, I, you know what? I'm going I'm to watch a movie again and again and again kind of guy. So I've seen The Weatherman for the 20th time last week. Oh, that's fun. I think that's one of the most underrated movies that there Great is. Great film. Mm -hmm. Nick Cage, right? Yep. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I really like it. Very sad. And we're from Chicago, so it's like very when when it's winter in Chicago, that mm. movie's like, mm, yeah, this is me. That's the sweet spot. That one in Stranger Than Fiction, definitely. Also good. Um, well, I kind of have to go back a little bit because I haven't really been out to the movie theater in a while because we've been busy. But at Sundance, we saw Young Ones. Do you know about that? Mm -mm. Um, Jake Paltrow, the director, in, and and uh, Michael Shannon's in it. Another great Chicago guy. Mm. And, yes, um, Karen loves him. Yeah, it's Elf like a Fanning. Western sci-fi. Crazy head. Dirty. I'm. I'll be really curious thing, to yeah. see what your opinions are on it because it's. Um, I mean, it's it's interesting. It was good. It was captivating. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I could have done without Elle Fanning talking at the end. Um, oh, you know, really? But, I like her. You know what? She's not great. Um, publicly, I, I think she. Oh, she. Oh, she. I'm sorry. She spoke. I thought she came at the end there of the movie. Oh, okay. had a monologue. Now my curiosity is piqued. Mm. What did she do that was so wackadoodle? Oh my gosh! They were like, well, well, what did you love about the film? What did you love working with um, Jake? Paltrow on and um and she's like oh my god I just I think uh, it was so great because yeah. he really loves the details and like we spent like three days just like looking for this this pink nail polish which in, oh my god, in her just, defense she's in front of like three thousand people at and this she theater is, what, like, as a premiere or something. and she's a teenager yeah, yeah like she's a teenage girl I get so. it but I know yeah. exactly what you're talking but, about uh, many years ago for the girl with the pearl earring uh -huh. uh, screening there was a Q and A afterwards with Colin Firth and Scarlett Johansson. Colin Firth, like Mr. Cool, Mr. British, Mr. Eloquent. Right. And so that's not the time for Scarlett Johansson to start talking like a teenager, which she essentially was. You know, she's like, oh my God, like that's a movie. Da, 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 da. And then, yes, uh, Colin Firth would answer questions <laughs> with like this. You know, so I know exactly what you're talking about. It, yeah. But on screen, not that at all. No, she did. So a, she had a so great performance. I was like, don't ruin it. Oh, she's great. In she doesn't have to put I... words in her mouth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's great in Super 8. Oh? Yeah. Elle Fanning. I think she's good. All right. Well, let's get on to what the big that? finale, ladies and oh, gentlemen. so much pressure. Uh, the grand finale, Karen's Birthdays, where Karen celebrates the birthdays of those who make the movies. Karen. Woohoo! Let's begin our birthdays this week by wishing a very happy birthday to the lovely Jessica Chastain, who turns th 37, but can play anywhere from a smart, red-haired CIA agent in Zero Dark Thirty to a smart, red-haired, gun-carrying cop in this weekend's new release, Sabotage. That is uh, Mary Enos? What is her name? Mary Enos. Mary Enos. Mary Enos. Mary Enos. Not the same red-headed woman? Mary Enos is uh, fake Jessica Chastain. Oh. Oh. Yeah. From Big Love. Mm. All right, well, it's not her birthday, but here's something interesting about her. <laughs> here's a little trivia for you. Can you tell me who May Ray Enos is married to? Shut up. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on, on, hold on. Not Don't someone with the last name. No, Enos. No, no. Oh, do we all get to make a, a sure. guess? Yes, guess, because you're be... never going to guess. But I will give you a couple of hints. One, this, char this actor is not as big of a star as the lead that was in his film. It's from the 80s, and we all love the movie. And wow. you love this character. Don wow. Johnson? Mr. Miyagi. Alan Close. Ruck. Yep. Well, how did you know that? Alan Ruck? I'm thinking were... 80s. He's Cameron. He's There's no more yeah. sidekick. That's who I was thinking. Cameron. It was totally yeah. Cameron. I oh, love wow. Cameron. You're good. I gave too good of clues. No Son idea. of a plus Where bucket. He? he needs to he's come He's having sex with that hot chick from uh, Sabotage, mm. apparently. Sabotage. Well, you say Sabotage. I say Sabotage. I say Sabotage. <laughs> Next up, let's I say accessibility. You say Access Access accessibility. accessibility. Let's wish. Let's wish a happy birthday to Lee's favorite. Oops, <gasps> sorry, I'm knocking him over. Actress Leslie Mann, who turns 42, but can play anywhere from "I'm not really that pretty" to "I'm pretty, but I'm pretending that I'm not really that pretty." Lee, now please tell us what is your favorite Leslie Mann movies? <laughs> okay, 
for the record, yes, I do believe I have come around on Leslie Mann because Why? I saw her. I can't remember what I saw her in that made me go okay. So for our guests, yes. I have a small axe to grind with <laughs> Leslie Mann because she only gets hired because her husband directs the movie. I cannot believe that it's true. Have you not seen the Forty Year Old Virgin? This is Forty. Funny people, knocked up perhaps. <laughs> Her husband didn't do all this? Well, I still think she's great. No, exactly. I enjoy her. And um, she's a 40-something-year-old woman who's gorgeous. I think uh, I think it was uh, This is 40 where I kind of came around on her. Oh, all right. I think Why? that was the one. Mm. What, what did you not like her in the I've always enjoyed her, but, but, but she's she's always come across to me as this woman where she, she ended up in far too many movies, and you could have gotten anyone to do that part, and you didn't need Leslie Mann. But you did if she was your wife. Well, I tell you this. Yeah. Tell I us. would have given her an Oscar nomination for Knocked Up. Oh, my God. That was beautiful outside the club. That, yes. I was just going to say that one. Well, you're not too, re- old for the, you're too old for the club, not for the old. world. Not, yeah, for, not, the not world. for the earth. Not for the earth. <laughs> I love when he gets all like low and sexy like, baby, yeah. baby, I would do you. <laughs> so How many times have we been there, though? You're yeah. like, I look great, but for some reason you're like, but not mm. great in the right way. She makes much funny in that movie, but the pain is there, and yeah. it's a great performance. Yes. Lee. Wish You're bringing her a happy around. birthday. Happy birthday, Leslie. All right. And finally, let's wish a happy birthday to one of the funniest men in show business. Do I feel a retraction's coming on next week? Perhaps. <laughs> Mr. Martin Short, <gasps> who turns 64 but can play anywhere from 30s to, wait, he's 64? He looks like he's still in his 30s. Yeah. Love him. He looks fantastic. Damn, right, he's I'm thinking great. of the right, I'm thinking of Martin Short. Mr. Yeah. Hollywood. Ed Grimley. <laughs> Ed Grimley. Okay. Uh, uh, Ned... Oh, I can't think of his last name in the Three Amigos. Oh, that's right. Yeah, oh my God. So For whatever great. reason, whenever somebody mentions Martin Short, yes. my brain automatically goes cr- to Leslie Mann. Goes to Leslie Mann because <laughs> they're built the same. They are. Uh, Very feminine man. Go, goes right to Dana Carvey just for a split second. But then you see that Dana Carvey looks kind of old and, yeah. and strange, and then you go, no, no. Martin Short still looks we, good without yes. plastic we surgery. We saw Martin Short live yeah. at a, a this like gala thing, 10 feet away. and live Great. in front of thousands yes. of people, he was fantastic. Yeah, he was so funny. Yeah, He's the which best. is a fantastic segue, Corbett, because Paul and I saw him back in the early '90s. We saw him in the producers a couple years ago. In the early '90s, we saw him at a it was a kind of a bringing back, a regrouping of all the Friends of Gilda. It was called Friends of Gilda up in Toronto. Oh, yeah. And it was awesome because they redid scenes from Godspell, the uh, musical that she was in, and she was in it with Martin Short. Hmm. So what I found interesting when I was learning about Martin Short's birthday is that back then is when he first started working with Dave Thomas and mm-hmm. other Canadians like Gilda Radner, Eugene Levy, Paul Schaefer, and Andrea Martin. And Nancy Dolman, who is now um, Martin Short's wife, understudied Gilda Radner. And I just thought that was so neat because then I found out that he used to date Gilda Radner in 1974, before he married her understudy, Nancy Dolman, in 1980. No, no shit. Wow. wow. Dated Gilda Radner. That's a no shit moment. That's pretty freaking no cool. No shit. Shut up, Marty. Yeah. He has good taste, hey, right? Thanks for paying attention, Grace. That was great. <laughs> All right. Appreciate the callback. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you know how much I love when celebrities sing. It's true. Yeah. People ask me all the time, can you tell us two things about Karen? Yeah, and what I are say, they? absolutely. One, she abhors violence, but has twice killed a man out of self-defense. Had to. And she loves to hear celebrities sing. And I do love to hear celebrities singing, especially when they're hysterical Martin Short. So I have a little something of him singing his dulcet tones on The Letterman Show, and he's singing about going to rehab. Bitty to it, you know, the rehab song we're all thinking of. If you want to be a star, then you better go to rehab. (laughs) Take some pills and hit the bar. Then smile for People magazine. Ned Nederlander, my favorite star of the silver screen. (laughs) Hey, that wraps another movie showcast, everybody. So follow us on Twitter at The Movie Guys, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Movie Guys, as well as on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Vine, Instagram, LinkedIn, all that shit. Thanks to Grace McPhillips and Corbett Lunsford. Yay! Thank, Thank you, guys. Uh, next up for them, I guess, Palm Beach, right? Yeah, we'll all see right. you there in early April. Thanks to Jamie Clark Elvington on the boards. Yay! And, of course, uh, for finding out awesome facts. Uh, like, now you know when Zodiac came out. <laughs> mm, it has been nagging at me 
And thank you, Steve Schultz, for your writing contributions to the show every week and for connecting us with this week's guests. Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. And remember, you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Thanks for listening. I'll say that news did kind of trouble.